Sanbanan Dumlang, hello, it's Simply Spisa here and welcome back to my channel but also a special welcome to you if you're joining me here for the first time today. So before we get into today's video, let's get you know the housekeeping and self-plugging out of the way. If you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified every time I upload a new video. Also check out my podcast, Simply Do The Work. I'm currently working on uploading a new episode so either by the time this video is out or just a few days after there will be a new episode but you know you can catch up on the ones that have been released thus far also i really appreciate it if you guys check out when you download this video of course check out my previous video on blackpink because that video was blocked in a number of countries it flopped even for my standards even for my small little channel i thought at first okay you know what it's blocked it won't be that much of a big deal but it it seriously seriously affected the view so i'm going to just re-edit it and just take out the you know the the footage that created the copyright issue but that being said as you can tell by the title of today's video you can tell that today i'll be discussing blackpink and selena gomez's latest single ice cream so yeah i'll basically be discussing the song itself the music video my thoughts on you know all of that and just the mess the backlash controversy that followed so firstly the song i love the song like for me it's an almost perfect song and you know i'll probably get, i'll get to why it's almost perfect but first of all i love how selena gomez is interwoven into the song like the call and response style of the verses i really love that and even just how the song flows so nice like i feel like the first few listens i, I wasn't even aware of the fact that oh now we're in the pre-chorus now we're in the chorus. like everything just flows so beautifully together and even just i think because the production right is quite simple it's minimalistic especially compared to what we know from blackpink's discography right it really does put the vocals as being the forefront right like i love how when selena opens the voice the the song right selena's voice opens the song and then how lisa with her rap and her lower register like and her cadence contrasts that like the contrast in the verses between the singing well in verse one you know, the singing from selena and jenny and then lisa rapping like oh i love like literally i could listen to like the first like 20 30 seconds of the song over and over because i just i love that call and response style and even i must say jenny's vocal performance on this song really surprised me like I knew Girlie could sing, but I don't think she could hit notes like that. And so I'm actually curious. I'm really looking forward to seeing how she'll perform the song live. Because even just the studio version alone, just from the studio version alone, right, just comparing their studio, like the studio versions of their songs, this is her best vocal performance from Jenny. And I know that some people, like, I'm also kind of included in this. Like, we were hoping that we'd get jenny rapping in this song and i think that also just leads into one of the issues that i did have was the line distribution they did my girl jisoo so dirty again and like like i know if you look at the line distribution charts right they put jisoo second to last but realistically jisoo just got six seconds with that little verse that she got because the repetition of ice cream chillin for me that doesn't really count because first of all i wasn't even aware it was just like it didn't really sound like she used to like when i listened closely i'm like oh okay i can actually hear that it's her like she wasn't really singing in her you know her her round full vocal range and so i know the issue of line distribution it's you know we can go back and forth on it all day right because some will argue that it's not necessarily about having equal line distribution, but it's about who sounds best for which part, which I do agree, right? I'd rather have a song that sounds good, right? Even if the line distribution isn't equal, then try to force everyone to have the same amount of lines and the song just sounds weird. But I think the reason why, I'll be honest, the reason why I was disappointed, I'll just speak for myself, is because Jisoo's almost always getting the least amount of lines, you know, and so that excuse of oh, it's about who sounds best, I can only take it for so long. There's only so like it comes to a point where I'm like, really, is that it? Or because even also another thing, right? Just comparing what I can say, right? The Selena and Black Pink line distribution 
that is pretty fair. That is pretty fair. If you compare it to their other collaborations, um, Sour Candy with Lady Gaga. Like Lady Gaga, I think, got like 60% of the song distribution. I'll put it up on screen. And then Blackpink had the remaining like 40% or less. And then Dua Lipa in Kiss and Makeup, Dua Lipa was like for like more than half the song. And then Blackpink had like the rest, you know. And so because it actually makes sense, because now this is a Blackpink with, with Selena Gomez, it makes sense that Blackpink will have more lines. I actually realized that I think because of how the song is presented to us, you... you You'd actually think Selena has more lines. I was actually shook. I'm like, oh my gosh, Selena, you only had like 25% of the song. But because of how she really was a part of the song, like when you're listening to it, I think it also shows that even with the behind the scenes, right? Because I think a lot of times when a K-pop artist and a Western artist collab, it'll be a thing of the Western artist will just come do their verse and they're out, or they'll sing some cute lines in the chorus, you know, and sometimes it works like i will agree like i'm boy with love um bts and house like i remember at first i was a little like wow like halsey sings so few lines but it's at the same time I'm like, but you know what but it works like you know halsey's vocals sound really nice on that song in contrast to like with idol like i feel like with idol like Nicki minaj she just comes on does her thing and she's out like peace you know and i think that's also that that is also why like there's like a difference between like when you say a song is with an artist and a song is featuring because i think usually when it's a feature you find that the song is m mostly done and then you just come in do what you gotta do and you bounce you're out you know whether it's worth it's more of a collaborative effort and that shows it shows in the work you know i feel like there are some features where it's credited as featured but then you can see okay no but like they work well together like oh bts and i don't is it pronounced love love like l-a-u-v i don't know how you pronounce his name their song who i discovered like the other day it sounds so good but this isn't a bts video <laughs> bringing it back to ice cream and so i loved it right and so one of the things that i i believe many fans were concerned about before the release was how is the song going to sound because for example, I know Selena Gomez's music, you know, um, I know the type of music that she's made and music and music that, you know, her most recent work, the sound that she's in. And I've also, you know, got into Blackpink's music and they are known for these, you know, big, loud, anthemic um, songs with these EDM drops and all of that. And also people were getting, people are saying that Blackpink's music was becoming a bit predictable, a bit repetitive, which, you know, I did touch on that in my previous video on my thoughts on Blackpink. So I'm not going to, you know, go down that rabbit hole too much, but I actually appreciated how they did something completely different, something that we haven't seen. Like it's a sound that we haven't gotten from Blackpink, like listening to Ice Cream. It's a song which I could imagine Selena Gomez making a song like this, like for her own catalog, her own discography, because Ice Cream very much is catered for a Western market. I think that can, we cannot deny that. Not, not only because of the fact that it is like 90% English, if not like 95 or something, but even just the way it's produced. The production is very... I don't want to say monotone. It's very like the beat doesn't really change throughout the song. It's like the same beat, just that they add and they remove certain elements to also, you know, give it some color. And I think even the fact that you've got five different voices on the song, that's also what helps give it a little bit more color. And so you could tell that this, this ice cream was literally made to become a hit in the US and the rest of the world. Like I can say, I can confidently say that this song was not like... It's not for the Korean demographic. Like they, that's not the demographic they have in mind. Obviously, because Blackpink has fans in Korea and you know other parts of Asia, those fans will eat it up, right? You know, you know Blackpink fans because it's a Blackpink song, and you know if you stand Blackpink since way in the beginning, then power to you because you've been going through so many droughts. So I can imagine you're just gonna eat this song up. I can understand when people you know, um, like K-pop fans don't consider this song K-pop because I do think it's not a K-pop song. Um, and I think it's not because of the language because I actually had an 
a um, conversation with a friend and he was saying he wishes there was more Korean because now it's not a K-pop song. And I'm like, I don't think it's just the lamb. I think K-pop is more than just the fact that they sing in Korean. Especially, like, this is, like, idol music, right? Because I discussed it in my first video on K-pop, the difference between K-pop and idol music. But anyway, another self-plug there. But the production in ice cream compared to how you like that like how you like that i describe it as more it's a k-pop song with western influences because it has the loud instruments that we know k-pop for it has these transitions i feel like it's another thing i've noticed k-pop has a lot of like switch ups within the same song the beat will switch up three to four times and um just harmonizing and there's a lot right and so this song ice cream I do not expect it to do well in Korea. Like, I don't mean to say, I'm not saying the song will flop, but I just mean that I don't think it will do as well as How You Like That or D4, you know, other Blackpink songs that did well in Korea, because I don't think that was the target market. And I know that for some fans, that is an issue. You know, some fans are seeing it as, oh, um, Blackpink is going to leave k-pop to become western pop acts which you know if they do power to them like at the end of the day blackpink has reached this level of fame and success that no matter what they do people will always be mad like people there will always be some form of backlash and i think blackpink is one of the few k-pop acts who actually can like make a u.s push in a US style or Western style of music. So I feel like Blackpink's discography is sprinkled with Western um, influences. It's sprinkled with sort of being like, if you listen to other K-pop groups, it's sort of like different. I think that's also why for me, Blackpink became like the first K-pop act that I started to stand because I found, because it's their music is so similar to what I already know, it was really, it was easier to take in. I think that's why also Blackpink is one of those K-pop groups that I think, have a lot of fans who just don't care for k-pop like you you have people who listen to blackpink love blackpink's music but would not call themselves k-pop stands because they just do not enjoy the sound of k-pop and that is why i think that k-pop is also it's more than just the language because me personally i would not just i would not check out a k-pop song I would not check out a song just because of the language. Like, just because like, oh, this this song is from this country. I'm just going to check it out. Like, it would be a thing of if maybe, of course, someone recommends it to me. Like, oh, listen to this artist. Listen to this style of music, this genre. Have you ever listened to this style, style of music? Because I saw K-pop as great. I'm like, oh, let me actually listen to it. Because it is a different sound. I don't think it's just... They're not just rapping in Korean. It's making pop music in Korean. Excuse me, I think one of the reasons why it's also become a, such a global phenomenon because it is different from what we get from the West. I feel like K-pop is like 110%. It's like go big or go home. And I do see those elements of K-pop in Ice Cream, right? Because you see this is a high budget music video, right? We see that there is choreo involved. But I think that Ice Cream was just packaged in a way to make it more appealing to the US market to the western world not just the us i feel like uh, i'm trying to unlearn this whole idea that the music industry starts and ends in the us because it doesn't you know i think the rise of k-pop is showing us that but i digress i think okay now getting into the mess <laughs> that followed right okay first of all some people like i did mention are concerned about blackpink switching and the whole question of is it k-pop what is k-pop Okay, we've touched on that. I feel like How You Like That was released specifically to be like the, the Korean hit. I feel like How You Like That, even though yes, it did also break worldwide records, but I feel like How You Like That, the rollout and just the sound was made. Like, you know what? This is for the K-pop fans. And so now with Ice Cream, you are like introducing the world to another side of Blackpink. And so... I recognize that K-pop fans will not necessarily gravitate to ice cream, but I do think that if you're being honest, you can appreciate it, right? Like you can like you can listen to a song like yo, this isn't my vibe, this isn't what I'm into, but I can appreciate what they did. I can appreciate how this collab, what this collab brings to the table. And so 
people who are saying that they're unstanding because of the collab, I just think, why, why now? <laughs> like, even in my video on Blackpink, I'm like, people who say they're unstanding, you have to ask the question, were you a stand to begin with? Because I think if you are a true Blackpink fan, that doesn't mean you're going to love every song that they, that they make. Of course not. But I think it means that you will support and appreciate all the work that they put out. Like, Lord knows that, like, Selena Gomez, I've loved her for years. There are songs of hers that I just, they're just not for me. Like, I will never seek out that song. But if it were to play, I'll let it play. I'll appreciate it. Some days I might give it a skip, but I'm not going to be on the internet dragging it with every bone in my body, dragging it like my life depends on it. And I think, I know for me personally, I think a lot of people can share the sentiment how release day kind of was a bit of a mess. Like I feel like going on Stan Twitter, it was just so much mess. Like I mentioned the issue of line distribution, right? You had fans who were attacking Selena Gomez saying Selena stole Jisoo's lines, Selena stole Rose's lines, people who were attacking Lisa because Lisa got the most lines of everyone else saying it's Lisa's fault for this. And it's kind of this issue which I've mentioned before that I get I get it, right? I get wanting justice for Jisoo and Rose. I get wanting them to, you know, Wanting them to get more recognition for their work and their talent, especially because this song is obviously going to have a wider reach than any other Blackpink song. I know how you would it would have been great if Jisoo and Rose had bigger parts, you know, to showcase their talent to the world. But you don't need to bring down another idol to uplift yours, right? There is a way that you can bring attention to the issues you're noticing that, you know, I, I don't appreciate how this person only got like six seconds of lines without attacking like am i making sense and besides that even just people who are going on like selenators and blinks who are going on and on on twitter talk about how they dislike the song but how the song is so bad it's like keep that to yourself keep like how how I can't even imagine what must what must it be like to be like an artist you, you put your heart and soul into this collab like looking at how how much they were teasing this collab and even just their interaction on social media before the collab was released you could tell that everyone was genuinely excited to have this out in the world they genuinely had a great time making this even watching the behind the scenes you could see they had the best of time making this collab and just the way some people responded, it was really toxic. It's like, I think a lot of stands, you know, were going on about how release day was just a mess. Cause you had the solo stands, you had the toxic stands and even had other fandoms coming and speaking ill of the songs. Like, what are you doing? Focus on your faves who just released new music. Like, leave us alone. Like, I don't understand this thing of people talking more about things that they dislike and the things that they do like, because it just makes you seem like a fan. Like. If you, like, I claim Blackpink and Selena Gomez, right? Like, I stand both of those artists. But here you are coming as an anti, right? But you know more about them than me. Something ain't clicking. Something ain't clicking. It just, it don't make sense to me. Like, people that I don't like, I do not speak on. It's just really sad because, like, someone posted a, a video on Twitter comparing Lisa's reaction when that um, teaser was put out, right? and how Lisa's like was acting in their Apple Music interview she seemed very disconnected and I know that Lisa um, switched off her comments in her latest Instagram post and she hasn't really been you know like none of the girls have really been online except for like a few posts here and there and I think it could be because of the hate and the backlash that the song is getting which I think it's sort of, it's distracting, it's taking away from the good, from the amazing, like, hello, it debuted with over 75 million views in the first 24 hours. And now, you get people who are just making these comparisons to BTS, so I think, like, compare Blackpink with Blackpink, like, compare it with himself, like, the song is doing amazing, it's doing so well, and I do think that... This is just the beginning. I mean, I'm filming this and it's like, what is the date today? The 31st, right? It's Monday the 31st. So it's been like three days since the song dropped. I do see like this song's going to have longevity because of the radio deals. Because just it, this song, I feel like it's really 
it's a moment. That's what Blackpink is offering. They, we got hired like that, which was like a moment. Because I know a lot of people really paid attention to Blackpink when Hire Like That dropped. And to follow it up with this collab with Selena Gomez, a moment. I mean, even for Selena Gomez, it's also a moment. Because you find that people who weren't familiar with Selena's discography will probably be checking her out now. I mean, it's also, you know, we can't also ignore that business i like selena currently sis is booked and busy she is getting the bag like her cooking show got renewed for a second season rare beauty is gonna be launched she has that hulu series coming out like she is booked and busy she is winning like these ladies are winning and i think in closing i just want to say if you don't like something there is a way you are voicing that i know i'm repeating myself it's like a, a broken record you can voice yourself without making people feel bad that's the thing. Just don't make you no know, need to make people feel bad. And I know sometimes on Twitter or just on the internet in general, we can so easily get swept up by the bandwagon, by the trend. Lord knows it's happened to me. But I think I just want to leave it there because I think I feel like I could just go on and on and on. And I want to make a separate dedicated video on this whole issue of just like hate on social media and just you know. And I want I want to gather my thoughts properly and come and present something that makes sense that being said if you enjoyed the video and you made it to this point please do give it a thumbs up also feel free to leave a comment down below let me know what your thoughts are on the song on you know just what the mess in the fandoms if you are you know a stan like me and until i see you guys in the next one i love you so much Mwah.